Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us and thanks for being part of our community. Uh, my name is Ricky Simpson and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Microsoft Defender for Identity and I'm going to be your host for today. Uh, so just a few uh, reminders for before we start. If you're having issues viewing the stream anytime during the presentation and if you're using the web browser uh, of Teams, the web browser version, please refresh your browser in the first instance. And if you're using the desktop app uh, of Teams, please exit the call and rejoin to, to fix any um, uh, issues there. Please note that this webinar is being recorded uh, and will be shared publicly. We'll post the recordings of our community uh, on our community site at aka.ms forward slash security webinars. Um, feel free to ask any questions at the time by typing them in the live Q&A window by clicking the ask a question button. Be aware that any questions that you post will be publicly visible. Uh, however, if you prefer, you can post your question anonymously by checking the box uh, right below where you enter it. And also closed captions in several languages are available during the live broadcast. You can enable them by clicking on the CC button located at the lower right corner of your screen. Uh, so we get a lot of questions during these webinars, which is great, obviously, and we will do our best to respond to all of them in real time. Uh, in the event that their answer wasn't available at the time, um, or if you have any additional questions after the event, please don't hesitate to raise them on our Defender for Identity discussion forum, and you can find that at aka.ms forward slash MDI community. And if you're listening to this after the fact as a recording, that's also a great place to ask a question if you have one that wasn't addressed during the webinar. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars as well. You can do that at aka.ms forward slash security webinar feedback. And I would also like to invite you to, invite you to join our public community by visiting aka.ms forward slash security community. Uh, and that's the best way to ensure you don't miss any uh, future webinars or major announcements. Uh, on our community page, you can speak directly to our engineering teams that create our security products and you'll be able to influence our product designs and get early access to changes by doing things like participating in private previews, uh, aka.ms forward slash security PRP. Uh, you'll have a look at feature requests, give feedback, uh, review our product roadmaps, register for events, or join webinars like these. Uh, and we believe that the best way to improve our products is by removing any barriers between you and the people who create them. Uh, so we very much hope that you will join us there. So in today's session, uh, we have uh, Daniel Naim, who will guide us through some of the latest detection capabilities in Microsoft Defender for Identity. Uh, we also have Banu Jafarle handling uh, the Q&A as and when it comes in. Uh, so Daniel is a senior program manager with the Defender for Identity team, and he heads up our detection portfolio. And without further ado, I will turn it over to him. Daniel, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ricky. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to, although virtually, uh, see you all. Um, it's been a long, long time um, since we had the opportunity to uh, talk to you. Um, we usually do it, obviously, in uh, live conferences, in, uh, in, in conferences and uh, but uh, we didn't want you keep you. We didn't want to keep you hanging with uh, all of the information about Microsoft Defender for Identity, and this is why we are doing such uh, webinars. The last webinar uh, that we've done was around security posture assessment that was done by my colleague, and today um, we wanted to give you a little bit of a glimpse of um, what Microsoft Defender for Identity is doing when it comes to our detection offering. Um, as Vicky mentioned, please feel free to send any question in chat. Um, I'll try to we'll try to bring the uh, important ones uh, live so we can address them uh, for all of you. Um, and that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, let's uh, start. Um, so um, let's uh, try to process this intimidating slide just for a second. I, I'm not gonna uh, take a lot of uh, 
time uh, explaining it because this one, if you take a close look into it, really um, correlates to your day-to-day -day job and, and, and works and, and you pretty much can understand what's going on. Um, but I will do it anyway, just uh, to put everyone on the same page in order to help understanding where Microsoft Defender for Identity fits into the broader um, Microsoft 365 Defender offering. Um, so what I wanted to show here is a basic example of how attack um, looks like um, and to put an emphasis that attacks goes uh, beyond a certain um, security product or different kill chain and if I'll take uh, one attacker as, uh, uh, if I'll take attack as um, my reference um, I wouldn't say that attacker thinks in um, how they um, how Microsoft or other detection platforms are trying to detect them but they are actually trying to do the opposite and go bypass them this example shows provide a very simple um, use case where uh, an attack can start from um, a malicious uh, email that uh, that uh, contains an attachment and these attachments contain exploitation and once being clicked on the attachment there is uh, um, the endpoint is compromised and then the attacker is trying to move laterally in the network in order to achieve and access the crown jewels of a certain network. Obviously, this is a very simple um, overview of an how attack look like, and we have some certain attacks that will start from um, compromised uh, endpoint, and we have an attacker that we um, magically will start uh, after the first lateral movement and reach into the crown jewels. Um, but just to give you an example of how uh, a simple attack look like and how complex it from a detection or from um, from security point of view that it goes across the different type of uh, products and different type of solutions. And I hope that this is um, not new concept for you, Microsoft 365 Defender. Um, but if it does, let's uh, put a little bit uh, of an explanation of uh, um, of, uh, of our offering. Um, this is um, basically an automated cross-domain security uh, product that combines and uses the power of each individual product in order to create capabilities like detections and investigation and response capabilities into one single um, source. Um, basically, um, Microsoft uh, provides you the ability to correlate between all of the signals um, that in a, in a simple attack that we've seen it before in, uh, in, a, in an example, sorry, and put them and provide you uh, a good value with the thing that you can see right here. First and foremost, the ability to see all of the data in one portal with unified entities, no more clicking in, seeing the Microsoft Defender for uh, Office alert in, in one portal, and then try to investigate the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint in a different portal, and then try to mitigate the file or uh, reset the user password in a different portal. So. Um, the ability to contain and to investigate everything in just one place. Um, but obviously, the UI is not what drives us in Microsoft 365 Defender and, no, and neither the product that I was just mentioning, but also some other security capabilities like the ability to stop the threats before they even execute. Um, either by providing you uh, security assessments or misconfigurations or um, uh, um, finding what are the risky uh, entities that you like that you need to mitigate um, or to uh, revoke access to. Microsoft 365 Defender also allows you the capability of providing response and automated automated healing um, to revert uh, certain attacks to the state that they were before um, with built-in remediation scripts. Um, 
Another thing that we are, we are providing with Microsoft 365 Defender across all of the products that are involved is the ability to do unified um, uh, in, in the threat intelligence and analytics that are shared between all of the products. So an Intel that was starting from Microsoft Defender for identity can expand and provide information that is found on Microsoft Defender uh, for Endpoint or MCAS or any other product in this regard and the ability to do cross product threat hunting by yourself. So everything up until now is obviously come out of the box. You don't need to configure much. Uh, uh, all the alerts, either that are alerts that are uh, related to a certain um, uh, vector or a certain uh, security product or alerts that are provide you um, signals from a different product um, are coming out of the box, but you also have the ability to create, uh, to hunt over the data yourself, um, and 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 obviously all of that is uh, enabling is being enabled by a common set of management and API and connectors across all of the suits. So you don't need to individually connect each product into your SIM solution, whether it's Sentinel or a different thing, or you don't need to pull the information um, um, from each individual product. You just do it from MT65 MT65 Defender. I promise I will do only two to three minutes about Microsoft 365 Defender. Obviously, there are a lot of more information um, that you can use um, to learn more, um, but we, in this session, we will focus mainly around Microsoft Defender for identity and some uh, enrichments that we, that we are doing in Microsoft 365 Defender. Um, it's just worth to mention that Microsoft 365 Defender is available if you have just one license for each in, for each product that Microsoft 365 Defender is, um, is built upon, which is Microsoft Defender for Office, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, Microsoft Defender for Identity, and or Microsoft Cloud Application Security. So let's start with understanding what is Microsoft Defender for Identity or a quote, a quote that I've heard personally too many times, uh, what? another defender for something? Yes. Uh, so let's try to explain what is the Microsoft Defender for Identity. So Microsoft Defender for Identity is, as the name suggests, and is the place where we try to protect the identities, the on-premise identities in the network, your Active Directory asset, um, both as, um, as an asset for and as a surface for sophisticated attacks, and also for uh, as a value as a as an asset in the environment that is responsible for identity and authentications. What we do is um, similar to uh, defend uh, Microsoft Defender uh, product. Um, we do it across different type of um, we provide uh, uh, four values or main values, the ability to prevent attacks before they are even starting um, using the security posture assessment. Um, this is the webinar that we that we had a couple of months back. Um, we also have the ability to detect using um, analytics and, and, and events and uh, 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 data intelligence that we are collecting um, on, uh, on, uh, uh, <clears throat> online and create detections uh, based on them. And then obviously when there is a detection that you would like to investigate the compromised identity, um, the ability to understand what are your risky users, what are your lateral movement path um, that you'd like to mitigate. And obviously the ability to either manually or automatically respond to compromised identities by um, reset the user password or disabling a compromised user and so on and, uh, uh, and so forth. Um, in today's session, we'll focus around the detection, investigation and response actions um, aspects. And uh, let's get the, the deep dive into that. So in order to understand Microsoft Defender for Identity value, we need to understand that Active Directory and on-premise identities are still playing crucial uh, uh, 
roles when it comes to cybersecurity, um, either by uh, attackers that I understand that understand that this is a surface that they um, they are trying to target. They understand the value of this asset. They understand the thing that they can achieve by getting an access to the Active Directory or using on-premise on-premise identities. Although the Microsoft recommendation obviously is to use Azure Active Directory as much as possible, we, we and we obviously encourage that. We understand that in certain environments and 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 in certain use cases, on-premise identities and Active Directory um, will still play a major role um, in uh, years to come. And you can see just some example from the last few months um, around certain uh, attacks or techniques or tools that have been used um, differently out in the wild, either um, um, uh, zero logon, which was a very popular um, attack, and the uh, Nobelium, uh, which is a solar winds uh, campaign, and some tools that are leveraging all of those um, all of those exploits and vulnerabilities in order to create um, to to achieve access to the Active Directory. So let's talk a little bit about the security values that we are providing. Um, basically, we are providing you the ability to do a security posture management for your on-premise users, um, both for your Active Directory and for the uh, ADFS assets and reducing the attack surface. We are providing you the ability to detect, investigate and respond to um, AD and on-premise uh, attacks. We provide very, very uh, quick deployment um, where you can install Microsoft Defender for identity relatively in, in, uh, in complex environment, relatively quick, as you can see. Our detection approach uh, is very, very uh, laser focused. We try to keep to be very, very precise and effective and provide you low number of alerts. We understand um, the concept of alert fatigue and the, the fact that you need to handle with a lot of alerts um, in with, with, the, with every security product. And we ensure you that every alert that is being detected uh, with maintaining good signal to, uh, to noise ratio, so we will not be missing attacks, is very, very precise. We'll contain uh, much, as much as information as we can and provide you enough information so you can investigate it effectively and easily. Um, we provide some of the most unique detections that I've uh, personally seen, although I'm coming from Microsoft Defender for Identity, so obviously I would say that, but I invite you to look at certain attacks and certain tools that uh, uh, I mentioned in this uh, call um, or tools that I didn't mention and see um, which other uh, products are covering that. And you'll see that Microsoft Defender for Identity will come with the upper end when it comes to detection uh, identities across the kill chain. And obviously, we are integrated into Microsoft 365 Defender, as I mentioned, for your investigation, incident correlation, advanced hunting, which we will, um, which I will demonstrate um, along this session. So, just for those of you who are um, looking to learn about Microsoft Defender for Identity for the first time, Basically, um, we support two types of um, protection for assets, one of them being the domain controller, obviously. And recently, we expanded our capability into the ADFS asset, um, which is both supported with the same sensor, um, which requires you to have Windows, 2000 and, uh, Windows Server 2008. And, uh, and you can see all of the technical requirements here. Obviously, everything is mentioned in our documentation, so you don't need to copy and paste it. Uh, you can just take a look. Um, 
you will see that, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about it um, as part of our detection offering. Um, you see that we are we are collecting some events from the endpoint, and this is to create um, to to support our detection offering and our security posture offering. And I'll talk a little bit about it. So what are we going to talk? So if you remember this, the three uh, silos, uh, the four silos, the one starting with prevention. So we said that uh, this one was covered in the previous one uh, in the previous webinar. In today's one, in today's session, we're going to talk a little bit about the ability to do real time analytics and data intelligence um, using network traffic and um, activities that we collect um, and create detection based on them. The ability to investigate all of that using MT65 Defender and the ability to do uh, response. So let's talk a little bit about detections, activities, and the in between. So it is good to start with understanding of how Microsoft Defender for Identity actually works. So we do have a sensor, as I mentioned before, that you need to install on your active on all of your active directories and ADFS. This is a very lightweight sensor um, that doesn't require um, a complex installation. Um, once it's installed, you don't need to do anything. It will handle um, updates um, on its own. Basically, we use four um, data types or um, types of information in order to provide our security offering. One of them we is then we do analyze uh, the, the traffic uh, and the network traffic that uh, that ID that the Active Directory or the ADFS is being um, aware of. We inspect the network traffic for LDAP, for NTLM, for Kerberos, for DNS, for SMB and for RPC. Basically all of the methods that are not um, encrypted. Um, another layer that we are using um, in order to create detection is events. Uh, we are using either the event uh, uh, events that are happening on the Windows side and we have a mechanism to um, capture events on our own in order to correlate them, in order to create um, a, a profile for the entities. We are also learning about the Active Directory um, objects and we parse them um, in order to provide you greater visibility of what are the assets and the identities and the devices in your network. Um, and we correlate them obviously with uh, the network traffic. Once we have the user profile and the entities, um, we, create, we create a baseline using the information. So Microsoft Defender for Identity does require you to install it for a certain period of time. And in this period of time, which is depends on the, the type of the detection, it takes between two weeks to 30 days. In this time, we learn what is uh, the baseline of the network so we can create um, can we can understand what is an abnormality or what is goes behind um, with this baseline that we created? I know um, a lot of you may think right now that oh, what happens if I install Microsoft Defender for Identity once if and my network is already sort of compromised or in, have uh, something in it? Obviously, we have a mixture of detections that are due require learning period, but we do have certain detections that are that will trigger no matter what. And we will discuss it uh, when we talk a little bit about more about the, each individual detection that we provide. But basically, um, it's not that uh, it will be missed. And even if we, uh, we detect something within the learning period, um, and then we didn't trigger it because we were still in, in the learning. And then uh, by the time the, the learning period was over, we realized this was abnormality. We will retroactively open the alert that we that we found in order uh, in order for the for the stock to investigate. 
so let's talk a little bit about the what type of detection we are offering. So basically, um, we, as I mentioned, and this is the most basic one, um, we have network-based detections that are based on anom anomalies and um, understanding what should happening on the network or not. It can be either network scanners that we will um, rule out for certain um, certain detections, and it can be uh, other profiling that we are doing on uh, uh, for data exfiltration and uh, and more like that. We have our behavioral detections, which are basically the, our secret sauce or our um, ability to correlate between something that is happening on the network layer with something that is happening on the uh, on the on the events perspective on the active directory and try to understand the behavior of certain attack so let's say that i have uh, uh, as prep posting and the first um, part of as prep posting is the ability to understand which users uh, by reconnaissance as a certain attributes turned on um, and then try to ask for a tail of TGT for these users. The correlation of those two activities that are happening together within short period of time is what we call the behavioral detection because it doesn't detect any certain tool or it doesn't detect any sort of uh, uh, malicious activity, but rather what the attack is representing um, on, on the low level. The two last type of detections are pretty much uh, self-explanatory. We are up to date with uh, with CVEs for uh, that are either targeting Active Directory, targeting a specific service, using network uh, uh, activities against the, the Active Directory or against identity aspect. And the same goes for a tool. Uh, I don't need to mention them. You know most of them, and or and and probably you know more than I do. Um, but we can uh, we can detect metasploit and uh, uh, mimicats and uh, and so on and so forth. Again, as I mentioned, these detections are more of a legacy detection that we used to have uh, with Microsoft 365 Defender and the enrichment that we can that we can get from Microsoft Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Those are more um, signature oriented and pretty much covered there. So to be fair, we are phasing away from tool and signature based detection and try to provide more complex detections, understanding the bits and bytes of each tool or each module of a tool and try to detect, detect it this way. So let me go over our detection offering. As I mentioned before, we are very laser focused when it comes to detections and we have a relatively low number of types, different types of detections that we provide. All of those detections are translated into alerts once they are triggered or once they are happening on the network and they are happening and we have certain detections across the kill chain obviously starting with reconnaissance uh, that goes for credentials access, lateral movement and persistence, and some detections for exfiltration, although this is not our main focus. Um, let's take, uh, let's pick some detections as example per, um, per detection uh, kill chain, and we can start with uh, uh, reconnaissance as a, uh, we have seen out uh, out in the wild that uh, a lot of attackers, uh, before they are trying to do something, obviously they need to understand where they have landed, what when they are where they are trying to achieve, how they can find a user or um, account with certain privileges that they can compromise, um, and this basically uh, relates to the reconnaissance aspect. We have seen activity that are happening against certain entity attributes. You can send an LDAP to give me all of the users that does not require a password in order to log in or that uh, that are um, 
that that, that have constraint delegation turned off or um, have multi-factor authentication turned off as well. Um, we've seen a lot of attackers or have SPN configured, we are, and this is related to the reconnaissance by the target entity attributes, and those queries um, are being detected uh, and by Microsoft Defender for identity as a, a detection of their own. Uh, and even if the, 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 the attacker will do a simple type of reconnaissance, which is uh, what we consider to be abnormality, because obviously reconnaissance is a part where things can happen naturally on the network, and this is why we require some of the, our learning period. So when there will be a user and IP address enumeration or specific group enumeration, we will try to see if the initiator of this query is someone who is supposed to be doing that or not. And if not, we will trigger an alert. Even if we see this, the, the, the type of enumeration, the, the activity of enumeration was triggering on the network, was happening on the network, we will, and it was part of the, what we use to, what we classify as legitimate activity, we will still provide you the ability to see all of the activities as, as, the, as the raw activity, so you can hunt over them, you can create detections based on them by yourself, and you can investigate them and understand a little bit more about um, what's, what was going on on this, um, on this uh, regard. Let's talk a little bit about the credentials access. So basically, once you have a certain uh, user that you'd like to access, you can either try to do brute force. It goes for brute force for ADFS activities and for AD activities. You can try to do Kerber roasting for a specific user. You can do uh, AS rep roasting. Um, all of that is uh, being detection, uh, detected. Another thing that I like to talk about is the ability to set up some ANI tokens. So users that should not be doing any sort of authentication activities in the network naturally. So you configure them in Microsoft Defender for identity. And whenever they are being touched, and try to authenticate to with those credentials, we will trigger an alert. I know this is a very basic offering, and I, I, but we really believe uh, we see this detection go do wonders um, because obviously the accounts and the devices are very, very appealing to a specific attack attacker. Um, and this is another offering that we are doing. I don't want to speak a little uh, too much about NetLogon because we, have, we will have a dedicated slice on that, but basically this is a CV that was uh, published towards the end of uh, last, uh, last year and provide you the ability to control AD by opening a NetLogon channel from every device that has direct access to the Active Directory. This is also being triggered by Microsoft Defender for Identity using our network passes and uh, behavioral um, detections that we provide. Let's talk about lateral movement and persistence, and you'll see some of the detections here are soon to be uh, coming, and some of them are related to the SolarWinds campaign. Um, as you can see, uh, the DCSync um, uh, is a, a detection that is already available. Um, but let's start from, from the lateral movement. Obviously, once you found this, uh, a compromised user, you would like to try to uh, um, access it. It can be either by um, taking, doing a pass the ticket and use the same ticket in different devices that has been, never been used before. Same goes for pass the hash or over pass the hash the ability to take a certificate, a physical certificate from, sorry, uh, a certificate from a smart card and use it in a different place, or uh, doing injection of the seed comp uh, history for a certain user and inject it in, into a third users, um, and some modification of, and of group memberships. So if a certain user should not be in a high privilege, high privilege group, um, we will track the modification of those changes. Uh, 
with uh, with our um, um, detectioning of detection offering. As for persistence and a little bit for exfiltration, um, you'd uh, note you'd see that all of the golden ticket golden ticket using time anomaly or when you try to uh, when you try to change the lifetime of, of a certain ticket and use it outside of the of this lifetime or the, the, the size anomaly uh, where you try to modif uh, modify the PCR uh, in the group that the ticket is uh, uh, is part of. Uh, the golden ticket using resource-based constraint delegation is a great example um, and the ability to do code execution or to create service services on ADFS and the domain controller is a good example of how we protect not just the identity as a, one I want to say user, but also the asset that is responsible for the identities, which is in our cases, or either the domain controller or the ADFS. Let's say I'm trying to install uh, a, a scheduled task that every time the, the device is being boot, it will run a certain script that will take a snapshot of the current uh, objects of the active directory. We will track the um, either remote code execution or the service creation on the device itself. And some of our learnings from um, Nobelium, um, we, we, we would like to also um, provide detections and mitigations where it comes to the ADFS and to be more precise when the DKM key is being read, um, which is a thing that we've seen uh, during uh, Nobelium, or th when the trusted uh, domain for the ADFS is being uh, uh, changed and added. All of those are learnings that we had from the recent uh, campaign, uh, the recent uh, Nobelium campaign. Um, and we understand that uh, it's very, very um, easy to detect using Microsoft Defender for identity. And this is why we expanded our capabilities beyond the domain controller into the ADFS and we provide those type of detections. Um, another detection that is a CVE based, we, and we have seen this in, uh, in a recent campaign, is the ability to do remote code execution on uh, server vulnerability. Um, we managed to pinpoint a certain attribute in um, the, when it's being used, um, it's correlated to the, uh, to the CVE, which is another great example of uh, mitigations to uh, certain campaigns that are happening um, against identities and on-premise identities. I promised I would talk a little bit about the um, the zero logon, and now we do it better together with Microsoft Defender for Identity for Endpoint, uh, with uh, M365 Defender and Microsoft Threat Expert. So on August 2020, Microsoft uh, published um, a critical vulnerability um, around the NetLogon protocol, which allow uh, um, every user with every device with uh, direct access or uh, network access um, to the Active Directory to basically reset his password and change it to whatever he wants. Very, very uh, critical uh, um, vulnerability. And using Microsoft Defender for Identity, we, 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 were, we were able to detect uses of um, this, uh, uh, this vulnerability. And we reached out to uh, certain customers using Microsoft Threat uh, Expert by pushing them alerts with the relevant information that Microsoft Defender for Identity and Microsoft Defender for Endpoint can provide. And, uh, and we've seen within the first week, uh, and it goes beyond that, a lot of uh, uh, customers were affected by this tool. Uh, the peak that you are seeing here is that is when Mimikatz was creating, uh, that we re releasing a new version that contains zero logon. And I think um, it was the other peak that we can see around here is when uh, uh, Qualys, um, vulnerability scanner, uh, released their offering for zero logon. 
and we have seen this uh, as being the end, and we detected that as a part of the uh, customer who were trying to see which security vendor can protect them. And luckily, Microsoft Defender for Identity um, is uh, one of them. So we mainly were focused around um, alerts today. Um, and uh, but we also provide you the ability to with low signal values um, and correlate them together, um, create anomalies and then feed them back into Microsoft 365 Defender um, and Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and MCAS uh, in order to create and provide you the uh, good visibility of what's going on in the, in the network. So even if we are not alerting on something, we will still provide you all of the activity that is happening um, in order for you uh, to create and hunt over the data uh, yourself. Uh, and, and we do encourage customers to do that because we believe that uh, you know your network the best, you know your industry the most, and you know what type of attacks you'd like to mitigate. And this is why we really believe in sharing all of the intel and the information as, as much as we can, so you can have as much as visibility into the raw data, but also the alerts in, in your investigation. So this was the detection part. Let's talk a little bit about how to do an end-to-end -end investigation in M365 Defender. And yes, I promise you, this is this will be the only portal that you'll be using in order to use any Microsoft uh, uh, 365 Defender uh, related security product. So, um, and, and this is our goal, to move all, most of the experiences from the traditional Microsoft Defender for Identity Portal into Microsoft 365 Defender. And this is the first, um, one of the first experiences that we that we uh, we are providing. This is the very look, the, this is the look and feel of Microsoft 365 Defender. As you can see, um, this alert is part of an incident and this alert has um, information about all of the accounts and all of the entities that this uh, this alert is containing and if i'll go to a certain account for example admin2 i will have a context for this um, for this account from different uh, sources again this is the microsoft 365 defender portal where we, we have the unified uh, user and information so you can see the investigation priority of the user you can see the anomalies of the user you can see all of the alerts you can see the events that are uh, use uh, that the user is having also the lateral movements for this specific user um, and if i go um, back to um, the alert you'll see that there is a jumping point not just for the user but also information aggregated information about the device um, both for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft Defender for Identity, and the ability to do um, hunting, as uh, as I said, um, over the data. You can see that there are different type of uh, data schemes um, for the applications and identities, but also for email emails. Um, and if I'll scroll down in the in this screenshot where I can't, but uh, you'll have to believe me, you'll see the device. Uh, uh, data sets uh, as well. Uh, but instead of me just showing you screenshots, let's uh, see it uh, live in uh, Microsoft 365 Defender. So this is the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. All you need to do is uh, security.microsoft.com. If you haven't onboarded yet, you'll go through a very uh, rather quick uh, onboarding process where it will import all of the information that you have from the various uh, uh, products that you currently have uh, onboarded. And this is an incident. This is a new concept that that uh, Microsoft 365 Defender was introducing is basically the ability to correlate certain type of alerts into one singular 
entity, which called incident, which allow you to do quick investigation within context of certain um, attacks, which is also being investigated using auto IR capabilities and remediation capabilities. And let's take a look at the, at what we can see here. So at first, when I see this uh, Microsoft 365 uh, Defender I, um, um, incident, I can see that it's uh, built uh, with uh, seven alerts across three different types of the kill chain, which is the credentials access, the discovery, and three alerts for lateral movements. I can see the timeline of all of those alerts. I can see what are the evidence that were found, and I can see that this incident is uh, related to two devices and two users. And it, let's go to the actual alerts that are uh, that are building up this incident to understand uh, very, very quickly, but rather efficiently, what is going on. I can see that this alert is starting with um, reconnaissance over SMB for certain uh, uh, user and IP addresses. And this is the alert that is from identity perspective for Microsoft Defender for identity. But then I can, I can see that there is an endpoint alert for the SMB session that is happening on the domain controller. And I can see that the user that was trying to do that, and I can see also the device that this uh, was initiated from. I can see those were linked into the same incident because they share the same device. And then, and this is really, really interesting to see. I can see that right after, let me show you actually the time, uh, within seconds or milliseconds, we have seen that there was um, a command line that used to do that, uh, that was doing um, overpass the hash. And this is from the endpoint perspective, but I can see from the identity that we also have suspected overpass the hash using Kerberos. And then it was successful successfully logged in, and then we've seen that there was a credential theft activity. And we can, with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, we can actually provide you information about the malicious uh, credential theft tool that was used. So let me just go into one specific alert. I can see information and about the alert. I can see that the, the source device that, the, the, it's, uh, uh, that was using, um, the OS, the source host that, you, that the, 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 the account was using, and the destination, which in, in our case was the domain controller. I can see that Ron HD on victim PC successfully authenticated against Contoso DC. And then I provide, I, the alert is providing you the information about um, what happens and, um, in this uh, certain alert. Another thing that uh, I really uh, excited to show you, this is the first alert of the of this uh, incident, which is the the initial user and IP address reconnaissance. With Microsoft 365 Defender, we will trigger automatic playbook automatic playbooks that will be happening either on the user or on the device, depends on what was the originating alert, to try to find um extra evidence on things that are were happening on the device at the same time effectively pinpointing the tool the exact tool that was used in order to create um to do this uh, type of reconnaissance and in this case i can see there was five evidence uh, entities that were found and i can see that they were, all of them were files and i can actually see the dlls for these five and since this is uh, all coming from Microsoft 365 Defender and not just from identity, I can just click on one of them. I can, and I can isolate or add it to the block file, uh, block or allow and block a list of all of the files that are happening that, uh, that I want to do on, on my network. And I can easily go to hunting from this one and understand where effectively this file is found in the network across all of the security uh, product offering. Um, basically, I can tweak the dates and, uh, and, and try to find either by file name, by file SHA, by the originating, the initiating uh, file for this DLL. Sorry, this DLL can be the initiator for a certain DLL or a certain file, 
all of this can be easily um, uh, searched across device file events, email attachments information, and cloud application events. Uh, basically, all of the data sets that can contain file information. All of the actions will be uh, reflected in the action center, uh, and you can see the actions that are supported are um, related to files most, uh, mostly, but also for device. You can um, isolate the device, you can run AV scan on the device, you can uh, um, uh, uh, and you can, and let's talk a little bit about um, our third topic, which is response actions on user. I know we have a uh, little time, so it should be relatively uh, a quick topic to cover. So detections are cool and everything, but I want to do something with what I find, and I don't want to limit myself to um, just files or devices. So currently, um, we provide you the ability to do containment of risky users using Microsoft 365 Defender. Um, that is being enriched with Microsoft Defender for Identity. So um, disable user is something that you can do right now exclusively on AD and uh, on AAD, but in the very, very near future, and this is like a sneak peek um, on the AD itself. So basically you can turn off the user um, um, in, within the Active Directory. Um, I did want to mention things that are not related directly to AD, but they are related to identity. So you can revoke the user session. So even if it's logged into a device, you can provo provoke, uh, revoke the, 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 the user uh, session, and then uh, the session token will be uh, refreshed. So the user will, have to, will be logged out of the thing that uh, he's currently doing. Obviously, change and reset password, um, which is available today for AAD and will be available in AD as well. And confirm user as compromised, which is basically the joker, um, where it just set the user in AAD to high, uh, in AAD information protection, and then you can define what you want to be, what you want the policy to be. Uh, let's say enable multi-factor authentication, uh, reset the user password, and this uh, and um, uh, requires uh, multi-factor authentication, um, and so on and so forth. This is really tailor-made um, response action um, for AAD. So when it where it comes to AAD. Um, which is just right uh, uh, around the corner when you will be able to do um, reset uh, the user password and disable it, not just on AAD, but also on the AD. We are close, we are coming to um, be uh, close on time. So just wanted to we say that uh, it was uh, great having you all today. Um, it's uh, it's a good opportunity to discuss about Microsoft Defender for Identity and its values and and the items that we are investing a lot of time in. I am personally um, in conversation with a lot of customers um, in order to shape what we offer and what we do. We really believe in within Microsoft uh, in being customer obsessed. So all of the things that you have been you, that you've seen here is things that we have closed. We worked with our private preview customers and with our partners. And obviously, if you are an MDI customers, it's very very easy to enroll into those Microsoft Defender for uh, Identity or any other product. Uh, to be more precise, um, relatively easy in order to onboard them. So just reach out. Uh, you have a lot of uh, methods, and if you don't find the one that is good for you, feel free to reach out directly to me, either by Twitter or LinkedIn or email, um, and I'll, I'll do the best that I can uh, in order to help you. Um, and I hope that uh, if you asked questions over chat, you got uh, some good answers. Uh, and if not, um, feel free to reach out for the MDI community as much as you can. Thank you very much.
Brilliant, Daniel. OK, so our next uh, Microsoft 365 Focus webinar is on Tuesday, June 8th, uh, and it will be focused on Microsoft Cloud App Security and protecting your Salesforce environment using MCAS. And for details and registration, please visit us on aka.ms forward slash security webinars, uh, where you can also find out and register for all the other upcoming webinars that we have in our calendar. Um, so I'd like to close out this webinar by thanking Daniel for an excellent presentation. Thank you to Banu as well, who helped answer all the questions that were coming in. Uh, but most of all, I want to thank uh, all of you for being part of the community and for joining us on these webinars. Uh, I'm going to repost the informational links that I put up at the start of the call back into the chat. Uh, so we'll be online for another 30 seconds or so, uh, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you very much and goodbye.